Hello, it's the month when we celebrate the bright minds that will one day rule this world. The little ones who must be shown right from wrong, so they can learn how to become productive citizens. I'm Theodore Henry and this is Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for joining us. On the show, parents, school is your children's second home. So we've got some pointers to help you get involved and to help them get the most out of the experience. And important information if you're business minded. Plus. What kinds of investments are in store for Jamaica this fiscal year? Those and more after the break, so stay with us. From the much-talked-about logistics hub to ongoing plans designed to improve the business environment. Much is happening within the industry sector this financial year. The minister tells us more. Can we achieve the logistics-centered economy? Yes, we can. We must. We have moved beyond being hub-ready. We are now hub-active. We are better enabled to attract private sector investment to drive the growth agenda. This fiscal year, the work will be further enhanced for Jamaica becoming the fourth major node within the global supply chain. The World Bank has agreed to provide grant funding for the establishment of a transformation office in my ministry to support the work of developing the logistics hub. A framework agreement, meanwhile, should be signed this year to establish a special economic zone as part of the hub plans. We are working assiduously with other key stakeholders to complete the white paper by the end of this month, with a full regime scheduled for completion by October this year. And with government having signed a concession agreement in April, work will progress on the dredging and expansion of the Kingston Container Terminal to accommodate mega ships coming through the Panama Canal. Other logistics hub action involves continued workforce training, improvement of the business environment, and further development of the maritime, aviation, and ICT infrastructure. This fiscal year, the industry ministry will continue to strengthen the business environment. It includes the continued rollout of the Mobile Business Clinic Initiative. To support the development of micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, the operations of key agencies will be merged to strengthen their operations. The industry ministry is also in dialogue with the finance ministry to examine the possibility of utilizing the unclaimed funds at financial institutions and insurance companies to provide funding to MSMEs. And on May 4, the company's office of Jamaica will begin a three-month, three-pronged amnesty for businesses. Under the annual return amnesty, companies limited by shares and companies limited by guarantee will face significantly lower costs to file their outstanding annual returns. Another amnesty will allow companies to request removal without having to file all outstanding documents or provide an audit certificate. The owners of business names on record that have never been renewed will get the opportunity to close them down for a flat fee with no late or renewal fees charged. This fiscal year, investment will be a top priority for the minister and his team. Deals discussed at the 2015 staging of the Jamaica Investment Forum will be pursued throughout the year. We hosted 180 targeted investors and generated over 20 strong leads, including four greenfield tourism projects. Strong investor confidence, Mr. Speaker, was also shown in areas of bunkering biodiesel, medical devices, and agriculture. 
Kingston Wharves Limited, one of the first major local players to roll out its logistics investment plans, will be increasing its input in a few months. Kingston Wharf Limited will be invested more than Jamaican $7 billion over the next five years, with activities including the construction of a 150,000 square feet logistics facility in Newport West in the first phase of development. Phase one, Mr. Speaker, is expected to be completed later this year. It will provide over, two, over 200 jobs. And the World Bank has provided 50 million US dollars to fund the Foundation for Competitiveness and Growth Project to promote broad-based private sector growth. This fiscal year, the Industry Ministry will also be diversifying the types of business process outsourcing services that Jamaica attracts. This includes the knowledge process outsourcing, or KPO sector, including accounting, legal and professional services, which is projected to grow at average annual rate of 20% over the next four years. So Speaker, we are also addressing the shortage of work where the office space for outsourcing companies to occupy, since this has ended expansion of the industry. And this fiscal year, the Ministry will be embarking on several projects to increase the earnings from the cultural and the creative industries. One is the Jamaica Film Festival, scheduled for July. Another project is a film lot at the old Goodyear factory in St. Thomas. It's moving forward, and it's anticipated that the design phase of the project will be completed in the second quarter of this financial year. So this fiscal year, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce is moving full speed ahead with plans for increased investment opportunities, added support to entrepreneurs, and the development of a logistics-centered economy. Camera, action, get ready for Jamaica Film Festival 2015. From July 7 to 11, venues across the corporate area will be showcasing the historic, dramatic, comedic and animated sides of Jamaica. More than 300 minutes of showtime, some 15 films, four days of experiencing the talents of local actors, scriptwriters and directors. Gear up as international film investors invade the country to watch Jamaica. For more on Jamaica Film Festival 2015, contact Jamaica Promotions Corporation Jampro by phone or email. Motorists, know your rights as road users. If you are stopped by the police in a road check, the police have the right to ask for your driver's license and vehicle documents. If you don't have the documents on you, you can ask for five days to provide them at a convenient police station. If you don't have vehicle insurance, you can be prosecuted and face the court. If you fail to renew the registration license, the police are entitled to seize your vehicle. If the police wish to search your vehicle, they should tell you the reasonable grounds for wanting the search. If you are given a ticket, sign it only if you plan to pay the fine and not contest the charge in court. And please be reminded, children under 18 years must wear a seatbelt, even if they are seated in the back. Know your rights. Knowledge of the traffic road code makes it easier to work with the police as they do their job to make the road safer for you and everyone else. So are you excited to take advantage of the investment opportunities the government's creating? Well, a good first step might be to set up and register your business or company. Up next, we explain the difference between the two. Have you realized that more and more Jamaicans are becoming their own bosses? Think about it. Varying types of companies or businesses are being opened all over the island. But before they could start their operations, they first had to be registered with the company's office of Jamaica, COJ. 
the process to register a business and a company are not the same. In fact, many believe that a company is the same as a business, but they really aren't. A company is a non-profit or profit-generating commercial enterprise registered or incorporated under the Companies Act, while a business is a sole trader or partnership registered under the Business Names Act. So with that said, we will be differentiating the registration process for each of these two groups for you. Let's begin with how to register a business. For new applicants, you will need to complete and submit the business registration form BRF1, also known as the Superform. You will also need a document verifying the owner or owner's current place of address, such as a driver's license or utility bill. The business owner or owners must present their tax registration number or TRN, an original valid government identification card, and a work permit or exemption letter where applicable. Professional certification is required for some businesses, such as doctors, lawyers, dentists, pharmacists, engineers, architects, surveyors, real estate dealers and developers, custom brokers, hairdressers, barbers, pest control operators, child care and golden age care services. Now the last thing left to do is to pay the necessary registration fees. The registration fee of a sole trader is $2,500. To register a partnership of two to five persons is also $2,500. The registration fee of a partnership of six to 20 persons is $5,000. And the registration of a partnership and a trade name as it relates to a corporation is $3,000 each. After you've submitted all the relevant documents and made the requisite payments, the documents will be verified by the COJ. Then within two working days, you will receive a certificate of registration. This certificate is valid for three years and the TRN and NIS number of your business will be displayed at the base. Certification ensures that you are registered with the National Housing Trust and Heart Trust NTA. Now, let's move on to how to register your company. There are some company owners who, before registering their nonprofit or profit generating company, reserved their company name. The COJ has made it possible for these persons who may not be able to afford the fees associated with the registration of their company or who are in the process of accumulating the relevant documents to first reserve a name for their company up to 90 days before it's registered. This is a very beneficial opportunity because if you do this, you will 1. Establish that the proposed name is appropriate and available for use. 2. Protect the name from use by others during the 90 days reservation period. And 3. Allow your company assured use of the name for pre-incorporation contracts. So, if you decide to reserve the name of your company and reap the benefits, you will need to do two things. Complete and submit the company's name search and name reservation form, Form 6. And when that's done, you will be required to pay a fee of $500 for the name search and $3,000 for the name reservation. At the end of the process, you will receive a letter advising you of the reservation of your company name. But if you choose to go right ahead and register your company, there are a few things to do. First on the list, complete the Articles of Incorporation form. If you are registering a profit-making company, you will complete Form 1A. But if you are registering a non-profit company such as a church, charity, service club or NGO, you will be required to complete Form 1B. When completing the forms, you should ensure they contain details such as the name of the company with the word limited added at the end, the core business of the company, the classes of shares and the maximum number of shares that the company is authorized to issue, for example, 1,000 ordinary shares, restrictions on share transfers, minimum and or maximum number of directors, names and particulars of the proposed directors and the company secretary, names of proposed shareholders, as well as any restrictions on the business that the company may carry on. For example, the company may not support any political party. All articles will attract a stamp duty fee. Stamping is done at the COJ. The second thing to do to register your company is to complete the business registration form BRF1, also known as the super form. On this form, you will be filling in the required information needed on the principal director, all other directors, the company secretary, registered office, and the projected start date. These details are now mandatory for the registering of a company. 
The super forms should be signed by all the directors of the company, as well as the person declaring the accuracy of the information submitted on the form. This person must present an original valid government-issued identification or a certified copy of a government-issued identification card on location. The final thing to do is to pay transaction fees. The cost for registration is $24,000 and there is a minimum of $500 for stamp duty. After you've gone through all the steps and made the requisite payments, COJ will verify the documents and then you'll receive a certificate of incorporation within five working days. With the certificate of incorporation, you will also receive the company's TRN and NIS number. The certification ensures that you are registered with the National Housing Trust and Heart Trust NTA. You also get a tax compliance certificate, TCC, which is valid for 90 days. If the time period to get your certificate is too long and you want to register at the soonest possible time, then you can make use of the expedition services offered by the COJ. There is the same day service which can be accessed at a cost of $6,000 for companies and $3,000 for businesses. Then there is the next day express service which can be accessed at a cost of $3,000 for companies and $1,500 for businesses. The cutoff time for the same day express service is 9.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. for the next day express service. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the company's office of Jamaica for more information by calling 908-4419 or visiting their office at 1 Grenada Way, Kingston 5. Remember, you can access all forms and samples on the COJ's website at orcjamaica.com. Congratulations to you and all the best with your business or company. Be an active participant in your child's life. Spend time with your child. No phones, no television, no distractions. Just the two of you. Just the two of get to know your child through play. Why not go to the park and get on the monkey bars? Sharing a meal can also be a time of bonding. If your child's in school, be involved in school activities. Speak with your child's teacher. Follow up on their progress in school and see how you can help. Assist them with homework. Attend parent-teacher meetings and support school fundraising events. Remember, your child's future is in your hands. Safeguard it. So glad you are a child of mine. I said be careful what you teach your little children. Make sure I have something to hurt them. Parents, keep your children safe and protected. Stay alert and be aware of where your children are at all times. Submit the latest photo of your child to his or her school. Know what's happening with your child. Listen to them when they say they don't feel comfortable going to a certain place or being around certain persons. Act quickly when your child tells you he or she has been touched inappropriately or approached with unwanted requests. Be the change. Help us protect our children. For more information, call 1-888-776-8328 or 1-876-878-2882. So, parents, we know this school year is nearing its end, but much can be accomplished in the time that's left. Plus, September is not too far away. Why does that matter? Because as the country celebrates Child Month, we want to help you help your children in all environments. And school is where they spend a lot, if not most, of their time. So up next, some tips for being more involved in your child's school life. Students. What we call this section? Teachers. Principals. They are the main players in the school environment. But there's another critical group without whom a child's academic success is highly impossible. Parents. If you want your children to come up to something, there has to be a combination, a close relationship between the parents and the school. The parent is the first and most important teacher in a child's life. 
Many will agree to the truth of this statement. Whether through biological parents or guardians, children learn first at home from their caregivers and then express learned habits to the wider society. This is the reason it's so important for parents to actively participate in their children's education. Many of us are not as good parents as we need to be, you know. Many of us believe that we just send a pit to go to school and give them something and teach them us to do the rest. It can't go that way. When you go to school and you find out from the teacher how your child is doing, if they're weak in an area, then you can always help them better at home. So it's, it's something that is very important. When a child sees their parent coming to school to make sure that they're doing well or to, to participate in an activity that they're doing, then it, it says to them, hey, my mom or my dad loves me or they care about what I'm doing in school. There are several ways in which parents can play a supportive role at their children's school. Become a, a parent volunteer in the classroom, um, a, grade, a grade volunteer, and um, just, just try to, to get more involved with the school community. So if there's something going on, if there's an, an event going on at school, then you can always volunteer in that area also. You could also become a member of the school's sport program. Start this early and maintain the practice all the way through the various grade levels. Also, develop a relationship with your child's class teacher. His or her phone number should be stored in your contacts book and it's important to have constant dialogue with the teacher to ensure that your child is performing at their utmost academically and emotionally. Perhaps there is something, a weakness about your child or a strength that you'd want to communicate to your teacher. Perhaps you want that teacher to know that your child will be better at the front of the class rather than at the back or pay a little bit more attention in this area. So you go and you communicate that to the teacher and um, if throughout the term you're finding that your child is not doing well, you know, find out what is going on. Some schools are using social media to keep connected with parents and students. If your child's school has a Facebook account, like their page. Several schools also produce newsletters, subscribe to their publication. You could even contribute an article or pictures for the newsletter. And one surefire way of being involved at your child's school is by joining the Parent Teacher Association. We're trying to re-energize the PTA to involve the teachers more, to involve the parents where parents can come and talk about their concerns. Um, parental issues, not understanding what's going on right now. So no, the PTA is not just about fundraising and, and to, to say, voice a, a, a negative opinion about the teacher. And it's not PA, it's not just parents association, it's parents teachers association. So we're encouraging not just parents to come out and attend the PTA, but for teachers to come out so that they can also develop that relationship with parents. When a parent becomes involved at their child's school, rich rewards await. No doubt the child will excel academically, emotionally, and spiritually. So parents, just as you have worked hard to ensure your children get the necessary school supplies, make sure they also get your emotional support and close personal contact. Check in at your child's school periodically and keep abreast of all the happenings. I can't become the master of my destiny. Step up your stride, make we work like a harder. Do it like Veronica, more than a sofa. We can rise above the challenges and shine. Always with passion in your heart. Make a plan and stop all the hiding. You think I saw, we reach out the edge. Disagreements and arguments are common features of human interaction. That's why it isn't uncommon to find that conflicts pop up from time to time when parenting a child. But as with the old saying, when elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers, children are impacted when their parents have disputes. However, there are things you can do to limit the impact of conflict on our children. The first duty, I think, is that the parent should try not to harm the child as collateral damage. Because I think in a lot of situations, a parent doesn't intend to harm the child, but is either so emotionally engaged in the issue at hand 
or is so unaware that they may say or do things uh, that are not suitable for the children to be involved in. We have had situations where a parent may have gone to school and made a comment about a child, like you're the worst picnic the Lord ever make. But then the child now gets teased by every other child in their class. They get disrespected by the people there. So I think a lot of times when we're expressing, we're not thinking about the effects. So I think awareness, awareness is the first thing I would say to parents. Second thing I'm saying to parents, the world is not really judging you every day for you to pass or fail a test in parenting. Most people empathize with the fact that parenting is a complicated job for which most of us are not equipped. So, so be gentle on yourself, and by being gentle on yourself, then maybe you would find more space to be more accommodating of the children. It's important to practice what we preach because we will lose the respect and confidence of our children because they come to us respectful, you know, and they come to us having confidence in us. But we can um, lose that by the way uh, we handle situations as well as the way we, we handle them. I think it's a commitment to, you know, create loving families, handle stresses by going to professionals to assist, take issues that the children are not involved in into a space where they don't have to hear and see all of the conduct that's really not appropriate for them. So parents, try your best to maintain an atmosphere of love and compassion within the home. Even if there are problems, resolve them peacefully. Do not take out your frustration on the children. And whatever the situation, let them know that mommy and daddy will have differences, but both of you will always be there to support them. Remember, children's care and protection are FIWI mission. We've come to the closing page of our magazine. Tell us what you thought about this or other shows on any of the social media platforms. Link us on Facebook, Twitter, or through our mobile app, which you can get from the Google Play Store. You may also send us an email at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. Remember, children live what they learn. Teach them the right things. I'm Theodore Henry. Have a wonderful Sunday. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.